Hey guys, it's Christina Marie and welcome to my channel or welcome back. Today I am going to go through 10 things that all savvy cruisers do. So these are 10 insider secrets for an amazing cruise. So if you're a beginner at cruising, follow these 10 tips that I'm going to go through today. Okay, the first tip is very, very important and it is to avoid a bad cabin. So if you let the cruise line choose which cabin you go in, they're probably going to give you a bad cabin. So these are the things to avoid at all costs. I'll also include a video below, um, which goes through this in more detail, but high level is avoid cabins that are on the very bottom of a cruise ship because they're far away from everything. Avoid cabins at the very front of a cruise ship because they're the most rocky. Avoid cabins that are below the buffet, below the main dance floor, or below any of the pools. These cabins will be very, very loud. Avoid cabins where you share an actual inside door with your neighbor. This is usually um, great for families, but not good if you don't want to hear your neighbor's conversations. And then avoid cabins that are near the elevators, near the main hallway. That's where they bring the luggage um, at the very end of the ship in the morning, and it can be kind of loud. So that's tip number one that all expert cruisers know, which is to avoid the really, really bad cabins. Um, it will be a nightmare and you won't be able to sleep. Okay. Tip number two that all savvy cruise goers know is related to excursions. Now you might be expecting me to say, book your excursion before you get on the cruise ship, which is true. You might be thinking I'm going to say, um, book your excursion through TripAdvisor, do your research before you get on the ship, um, which is true. But this is a different secret. Um, this is to do your research and find out how long of a drive it is to the excursion destination. So most excursions put on by the cruise ship are pretty good. Um, yes, they're more expensive than if you were to do it yourself, but it's not crazy. But some of the excursions are like an hour drive there an hour drive back and you're only at the place for maybe an hour and a half. In my opinion, this makes your day at port miserable and the cruise ships usually don't tell you how long of a drive it is and sometimes they put you in a truck or a van that's kind of crowded without very good AC. Um, so I had this happen to me. I booked a cave um, tubing excursion in Belize. It sounded amazing, but it was literally in an hour and a half bus drive there. We waited for 30 minutes. The excursion itself was 45 minutes. We waited another 30 minutes and then had an hour and a half bus ride back. So tip number two is to see how far the excursions are from the cruise ship. Usually cruise ships dock um, not close to the town itself, so it might be a long drive. Tip number three is when you get to port, um, if you don't wanna do an excursion, just take a taxi to the beach. Um, this is honestly the most relaxing way to enjoy a cruise, in my opinion, is at each port, just find out what the two best beaches are and take a taxi to the beach. That's my insider secret that I've done as an expert cruise traveler. Tip number four is uh, merchandise to purchase, which I'll include a link to below, but most cruises, especially Caribbean cruises, you're at the beach. So what do you want at the beach? Um, usually you want a towel, but you don't need to pack that because cruises offer that. Of course you need sunblock and a hat and all of that, but this is my expert trip for you newbies, or even if you travel a lot is one is to get a floaty. So this is the floaty that I pack on every single cruise. And as you can tell, um, it's pretty, 
it's pretty small, right? Like this is not gigantic. It doesn't take up much room in my suitcase. And it even has a string attached to it. So it's um, easy for me to carry. And then once I get to the beach, this is my recommendation. Um, it blows up really, really quickly um, into this basically. So this is great for the beach because I personally just like to lie on it and float around. Um, it's just a great pool, beach toy that you don't have to then pay $15 to rent a floaty. Buy something that's small, as you'll see, this is lightweight and very, very small, and I love it. So I'll include a link to this floaty below. And then the next thing that expert cruise travelers do, um, so this is probably a secret that only my mom and I do, is to pack a wetsuit. Um, seriously. Um, so Amazon has an amazing wetsuit. This one, I think it's by Citron Lady. I'll include a link below. Um, the top is just a jacket. So if you are going on a cruise to the Caribbean, I think that this is amazing. Um, it's first off, it's cheap. Um, it's lightweight. It doesn't take up much room. It has SPF in it, so you don't have to put on sunblock on your shoulders because you're protected. And what I love is when I am cruising in the Caribbean in January, February, and it's cold, I can wear this wetsuit jacket. It covers my arms. It will protect you from the sun. It zips up nicely and it looks good and it's cheap. So this is a cruise expert tip. Um, this jacket also comes in plus sizes. So again, I'll include a link below. So no matter your size, this will fit. I think I got it in a size medium, but I'll include a link below to the exact size that I got with the jacket. And then related to that, these are the pants. Um, they're very, very comfortable. I'm pretty tall and these fit perfectly. Also just like a cruise tip, even has pockets in the side and this goes around your ankles. So a really easy way to stay warm at the beach if you're going on a cruise in the winter time. Um, it's just nice to be able to step into the water, not be cold, and this protects you from the sun, which is amazing. Okay, tip number five for you cruise goers is to pack Tupperware and a plastic water bottle. So I always pack this Rubbermaid Tupperware container when I go cruising. Um, there's a couple of reasons why this is amazing. First, when you get into your cabin, ask them to empty out the fridge so there's plenty of room. This is great for one, midnight snacks. Um, I find that breakfast on cruise ships has the best food. So I put a midnight snack in here. And then in case I get hungry at night, I have a snack. Um, also, if you're going into port, this is great for packing a sandwich, eggs, fruit, whatever you want. Um, so what I usually do is pack like a light lunch with me when I'm going into port. And that way I don't have to spend money on food in port. I don't have to worry about eating something that will get me sick. Um, then when I get back to the ship, if I'm still hungry, I have lunch. But this way you get a free lunch when you're in port. I will note that um, some cruise ports like Mexico, they actually do have dogs and they do smell your bag and check to see if you're carrying food. So at some cruise ports, if they say don't bring food into the port, um, you can try to sneak it in, but I would recommend not. They caught me with my food and made me throw it out. So just be aware of that. So pack a Tupperware container and then I forgot to grab it, but I just have a big Rubbermaid plastic water bottle. This is great for filling up every day and then bringing with you to port or just having water in your cruise cabin. It just is nice to have a water bottle. Okay, tip number six that all cruise experts know is to take an Uber to get from the cruise ship to the airport. So many 
cruise lines will offer shuttle services to get you from the cruise line to the airport. Don't do the shuttle services. One, they're expensive, and two, they're a pain because you have to be somewhere at a specific time and wait on other people. Usually an Uber is much, much cheaper and easier in my experience. Tip number seven that expert cruise do goers do is they pack earplugs and mosquito repellent. So most cruise ports, you won't need mosquito repellent, but some of them you will get eaten alive without mosquito repellent. And I think I was in Belize and they were selling mosquito repellent for like $10. So pack a small thing of mosquito repellent. I'll include a link below. And then I also pack, literally this is what I pack, um, is earplugs. The reason I pack earplugs is one, in case it's loud in your cabin at night, and two is if the music on cruise ships is too loud. So I cruise with Holland America a lot. They've gotten better about their volume in the evening, but sometimes the music is just really, really loud. So I just bought some cheap little earplugs on Amazon. This is what they look like. Those um, other ones that mold to fit your ear are also really good. I'll include links to both below. Okay, tip number eight that all cruise experts know is to get an assigned table with a set eating time for dinner. So you might be tempted to have like open seating on a cruise ship and take whatever table they give you each night. But then you have to usually stand in a line or if you make reservations, you have to call every night, get it set up. It's just a pain go ahead and get an assigned table with an assigned waiter. That way your waiter gets to know you, you get to walk straight to your table every night. It's just a much more relaxing experience. I'll include a link below to another YouTube video where I talk more about assigned seating versus open seating. Okay, tip number nine that all expert cruise goers know is to pack your own beach bag. So a lot of cruise ships will give you a beach bag when you get to the room with the cruise ship's name on it. My experience, the beach bags are like cheap plastic and then you're walking around the cruise port with a big thing that says, hello, I'm a tourist. So I have just a simple beach bag that looks like this. This one's from Tommy Bahama. Honestly, Amazon has tons of beach bags. This one, I should have, it'd be better if I had one with a zipper, but this one has an inside zipper that I can put my cash in, which is good. Just go ahead and pack your own beach bag. It's gonna be way better for going into port to pack your beach towel, swimsuit, clothes, um, water bottle, snack, sunblock repellent, etc., And then just get something that's small and folds up really nicely into your suitcase. Okay, tip number 10 that all expert cruise goers know is to pack a ton of cash. So I usually pack cash in a plastic bag and just for safety, I pack it in a couple of different places in my suitcase. Um, same thing when I'm in the cabin itself, same thing when I'm going to port, I might have like some cash in my beach bag, some in like my sunglass container, um, switch it up in case something happens. But I honestly would bring probably, I probably don't bring enough cash. I would bring $80 per person per day. And here's why. If you are going into port and you do a taxi tour for the day, sometimes that can be $80 per person. And then if you want to buy stuff at port, if you are going somewhere where you are talking to the local people, they all want cash or they'll offer a significant discount if you pay in cash versus credit card. So I would highly recommend bringing cash to buy stuff in port. Um, the main cruise shops accept credit card, but if you want to get the good local stuff, you're going to need cash. Okay. Um, 
I have a bonus tip at the end. Tip number 11 is don't buy the cruise ships Wi-Fi. In my experience, it's super duper slow and you're on a cruise. Enjoy like just being disconnected. If you do need Wi-Fi, what I highly recommend you do is just wait until you get to port and find the restaurants with the free Wi-Fi or see where the cruise the crew from the cruise go, um, they usually know where to go to get the best Wi-Fi. You'll see big groups of them standing together. Um, for example, one cruise port, the Starbucks was the best place to get free Wi-Fi. That was really good. So look out for the crew. They know where to go. Okay, so in summary, I'll go through the 10 things that expert cruise goers know. And if you thought this video has been helpful so far, please subscribe below. Okay, tip number one, avoid a bad cabin. Two, avoid excursions that are a long drive away. Three, take a taxi to the beach when you get to most ports. It's just an easy, stress-free way to enjoy the day. Four, pack a floaty and a rash guard or a sweatsuit. Five, um, pack Tupperware and a water bottle. Six, take an Uber to the airport. Seven, pack earplugs and mosquito repellent. Eight, get an assigned table. Nine, pack a beach bag. Ten, pack cash. And bonus pack, avoid the Wi-Fi. Um, if you have any other tips for cruise goers, please leave a comment below. Or if you have any questions about cruising, um, leave a comment below. I'd love to help you out. Thanks guys.